today. We're going to talk about the fact that we already know that moving charges cause a magnetic field, right? We've talked about current creates a magnetic field. Um, now we're going to talk about the fact that if we have moving charges that create a magnetic field, what do you think moving poles cause? An electric field. <coughs> moving charges cause a magnetic field. Moving poles then will cause a magnetic field. I'm sorry, an electric field. So, we're going to walk through all of that. Actually, at first I'm going to have a very basic demo right here, which is this. We have a magnet. We have a solenoid. If I turn on the power to the solenoid, it creates a magnetic field inside the solenoid, and it does this. It pulls the magnet inside, right? Because we have, if we have a magnetic field in there, it's going to pull it in. Just so you know, this is how the power locks in your car work. There is a solenoid in your car. When you flip the little button, it runs current through the solenoid, creates a magnetic field, and pulls a magnet in and locks the door. If you want to unlock the door, it switches the direction of the current, I'll switch the direction of the magnet, magnetic field, and it pushes it out instead. So this is pushed out. That is how the automatic locks in your car work. And that's just like a lock on the what? I'll just pull Okay. Yeah, I, I know. It's, it's sorry, I didn't okay. So we have that basic concept. Now, what we have here is so moving charges cause a magnetic field. Moving poles then cause an electric. Basically, it works out like this. If the magnetic field changes over time, charge flows, and you get an induced current. and an induced EMF. So what we're talking about today is an induced current or an induced EMF by a changing magnetic field. So we start out with today's desktop picture. Today's desktop picture is a picture taken, believe it or not, this year. How many people in Southern this year? Is there snow to slide on? The we think one or two reasons. <laughs> Thank you, Winter. You can still do that. Yeah, but we know it's not. OK. So what we have here is this right here is our solenoid. Now, our solenoid, I'm going to turn on and off the power in the solenoid. So right now, there's no magnetic field in the solenoid. When I turn on the power, it has magnetic field. When I turn it off, it doesn't have a magnetic field. So I can cause a magnetic field to change. Right next to it, I'm going to put this solenoid. Now, this solenoid, if you'll notice, does not have any current, any wires attached to it, other than the one where I'm going to measure the current going through this solenoid. So when I put this right here, and I measure as a function of time, the current going through this other solenoid, and I turn on and off, the current going through the solenoid, you can see what I've done is I've actually induced a current in the other solenoid by turning on and off the, the power, the current going through this solenoid. So I created a magnetic field in this solenoid, which has some magnetic field outside of it, which caused a magnetic field to change inside here. And a changing magnetic field caused current to flow in this solenoid without ever having any wires attached to that solenoid causing current. Another way that you can do this is you could take a magnet. As we discussed, a moving pole is going to cause an electric field, which means I can induce a current in the solenoid simply by putting a magnet through. 
So if I take this magnet and the solenoid, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the solenoid and we're going to measure the current as a function of time through the solenoid and I'm going to drop the magnet through the solenoid. So what you've got here is current in the solenoid caused by the magnet, the magnet moving through the solenoid. So let's zoom in so we can take a look at more specifics. This is the current in the solenoid as the magnet passed through it. Now, the reason this works is because we have a moving magnetic field, right? The poles have a magnetic field around it, which causes a change in the magnetic field inside the solenoid, which is going to change the current. Now, notice this is the current going in, just less than 0.2 amps. The current, while it was going out, was had a magnitude of almost 0.25 amps. Why is the current on the way out more than the current on the way in, Sierra? It's because the magnet's moving faster. So Simply, it more. right. Or because the magnet is moving faster, the magnetic field is changing more quickly, therefore the EMF is greater, therefore the current is greater. So the faster that magnetic field is changing, the larger the EMF, the larger the current. Okay. Yes? Is this why uh, like magnets sometimes screw up computers and stuff like that? Well, <laughs> the, the computer has all sorts of electrical wires in it and their charges moving and charges in a magnetic field are going to feel a force. So yeah, I, I mean, there's all sorts of reasons that it could mess up what a computer is doing. Yes? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. All right, so we've done all of that. On, well, let's start with this. We have, this is called Faraday's Law of Induction. Faraday's Law of Induction. And it looks like this. The EMF which is an induced EMF is equal to the negative of N times the derivative of the magnetic flux as a function of time. Faraday's law of induction. We can induce an EMF by changing the magnetic flux as a function of time. I'm going to talk about the negative sign in a little bit. That's something we're going to take a bunch of time to talk about. I'm not going to talk about the negative sign just yet. We're going to talk about the other parts of it. Just so you're aware, on your equation sheet, the n is not there. n is simply the number of loops. So on your equation sheet, it lists Faraday's law of induction, but it lists it for only one loop. Okay. Just so you know, there are very simple practical applications of this basic concept. This right here is a flashlight, an LED flashlight, but it doesn't have any batteries. The way it gets energy is you have a magnet and a solenoid, and you do this. And it just causes current to throw, flow through that solenoid and it charges the battery. So pretty cool. Pass that around. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, well, the wind up ones use a, use a generator. This just uses some. So then they'll do the shake. Right, the shape, this, this is the one we're going to shape. Okay, so in other words, we know the magnetic flux is equal to V A cosine theta, just a general equation for the magnetic flux. In other words, the EMF, the induced EMF, is equal to the negative of the derivative as a function of time with the number of loops times V A cosine theta. In other words, you can cause and you can induce an EMF by changing one, the magnitude of the magnetic field, two, by changing 
the area enclosed by the loop. Three, by changing the angle between the area vector and the magnetic field. Or my favorite, number four, any combination of the other three. So this whole concept of the induced EMF is the fact that a caused by the fact that a changing a moving pole which changes the magnetic field can cause a current. So basic applications of Faraday's law of induction. One is your ground fault interrupter. This guy right here. When you press the test button, you press the reset button. Okay? These ground fault interrupters, they have to be in uh, anywhere in your house where there might be water, uh, kitchen, bathrooms, etc. And the way that they work is this. There are the, these two wires represent the current going into and out of the circuit. And there is a iron ring and a coil, a coil which is very much like this solenoid. And the current through both of these wires should be the same, right, the whole time, because it's one circuit, so the current should be the same. If you have a short circuit, suddenly one of these two wires will have a different current than the other one, because the, cur the current will be going some other place, right? Hopefully not through you. That's the whole, that's what we're trying to avoid. So if the current through one or the current through two suddenly changes, that changes the magnetic field and the sensing coil, basically, if it experiences a current, it will shut down the circuit. So if you get a current in the sensing coil, which we cause by a changing magnetic field, which, cause, which happens if one or two, the current in one or two suddenly changes. That is how a, the ground fault interrupter works. Another common application is the electric guitar pickup. The way an electric guitar pickup works is each one of these is a little magnet. And it magnetizes the string. And then when you pluck the string, that magnetized part of the string moves back and forth. That changes the magnetic field. And there's a pickup in the uh, a coil, just like the solenoid, which senses the change in the magnetic field, causes a current to flow through the pickup. And that's how we interpret the sound. So there are a lot of various applications of Faraday's law of induction.